All right, well, I thank everybody for uh, joining us tonight. Uh, today is Friday, February 8th. This is our 22nd broadcast. It's our second broadcast for 2019. We've got a lot of areas we're gonna be covering tonight. I apologize, we had a little bit of a later start tonight. As I tried to let everybody know, we started about 15 minutes later than the uh, advertised time at the time of the announcement, but it looks like everybody's got in well, so I see Greg, Jeff, John, Mark, and Martin are already on. So thanks for joining on our webcast platform. And then we've got uh, Facebook Live going here as well. Nice to see John Boone's uh, join is on a board. So again, just a reminder for those on Facebook Live, there's gonna be about a 20 to 30 second pause before I can read your comments. And I'm happy to take any questions you have. Those that are on the uh, web platform, on the Zoom platform, you'll see the Q&A button. And there's also a chat icon. You can hit either of those and I'll get alerted uh, as soon as you uh, decide to tag me and, and ask a question, whether it's a Q&A question or just a chat entry. So if you could do that, that would be great. And I look forward to your questions tonight. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So we're gonna start uh, by just seeing where we are uh, since we've started the new year. Again, it's been three weeks uh, since we gave our last update. So I wanna do that now. You should be seeing our uh, product uh, pipeline snapshot page now. I'm actually gonna refresh the page because the dates changed in the last half hour. I got a snap update from uh, HQ. Line of communications is working. So uh, I'll let this page load here for a second. Let it finish loading. There we go. So let's go through the schedule here. So again, just as a reminder, on the right side, uh, I'll always list our newest pre-order titles, uh, topmost being the most recent down. So you can see a list of about, uh, what is it, about 15 to 20 games uh, from most recent down. And the War, uh, the War of the Pacific is the most recent uh, pre-order announcement. That was actually announced at my last, our last session, which was three weeks ago. So if we turn our attention over to the left column, that's what we, we're gonna focus on for the next few minutes. And then we're gonna look at the release dates for our upcoming titles uh, mainly, and then I'll be giving updates on these. So um, no designer interviews scheduled for tonight. My apologies, you're stuck with me, which means you can ask me questions, which will hopefully make it a lot less dull for you all just to get these updates. So I welcome any questions you have and I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, but we're gonna focus on updates. So uh, the first thing I wanna update you on is for Paper Wars uh, issue 91 Jihad. That is now shipping as of today. We ban began shipping just today. For those that subscribe to Paper Wars or picked up this issue, I'm not gonna spend too much time on Jihad because we covered it in detail in our last broadcast. And if you go to our YouTube channel, you can see all of our broadcasts there. And then we have a table of contents page so you can actually scroll through the various topic uh, settings. So excuse me for one moment while I got my door there. So again, I'll, if you check the last episode on our YouTube channel, you can actually click on a link for uh, Paper Wars Jihad update and it covers the game in a lot more detail. Again, just elevator pitch. This is a Steve, Stephen Newberg from Simulations Canada. It's a new edition of his game. I went through the entire Paper Wars issue last broadcast, uh, but as a reminder, here's the table of contents. You can see some of the articles that are uh, covered uh, in the magazine. Uh, and again, this is on our product page. You can see also the, uh, the game map here, pretty simple, straightforward game map for the game. And finally, we have the counter sheet. So you can also check out the counters uh, for the game. So again, that is now shipping, I believe actually, uh, one person just may have reported the, I don't know if they received it today or not. They mentioned they were reading it. So uh, maybe we got some early shipments out. So uh, it sounds like perhaps somebody even received their copy already. So again, the big news here is it's officially quote unquote now out the door is uh, Paper Wars issue 91 Jihad by Stefan Newberg. So again, I hope that's something uh, you'll let us know if you've received it or if you subscribe, definitely let us know. And I believe uh, we had some errata counters in this issue as well, uh, which you'll find if you visit the web page, if you look at the counter sheet, bottom left corner, we've got, I think, some errata counters for one of our games. So again, that is uh, Paper Wars shipping now. You'll notice also uh, we've had an update. We've moved up the timeline 
for two games that will be shipping on Monday. So in three days, we've got a double release. We've got The Late Unpleasantness, which I'll be talking about here in a moment, and also Colonialism, which is a, uh, a pretty well-known Euro game. We're doing an expanded second edition. So let's start with uh, A Late Unpleasantness. This again is a game by the late Steve Rui, the designer. Fortunately, we were able to be in communication with Steve. He passed away suddenly, was unexpected, uh, very sad. Uh, but, you know, I'm, I'm happy to know that uh, he got to see the cover art and this was his first design and he, he knew it was something we were doing. So, uh, so uh, sad news, but uh, take sol we're taking solace in the fact that, you know, Steve and Steve got to see that, got to experience that before he passed uh, shortly thereafter. So this is two games in one. You'll notice here I'm also making a push to get more artwork on the Compass Games website. So I did add uh, counter sheets, uh, sample cards, even some player aid cards. So if you scroll, if you go through this list, you'll see here uh, one of the counter sheets. This is counter sheet two of two front. Again, there's two games, one counter sheet for each game. Uh, we've got... Uh, We've got the, the two game maps here. We've got the Gates of Richmond. Again, I'm not gonna spend too much time here because you can uh, actually visit the page yourself uh, and you'll be able to look at both, uh, both of those maps. We've got both counter sheets here as well. So this is the uh, late, this is the other map sheet here, map sheet number one. Great job by Bruce Erian, who's done a lot of work for us recently. So again, two counter sheets, two maps, but also we've got game cards. So this game does have game cards that help in terms of operations and activities that can take place during play. And this is for both games. You can see here, if it takes all summer, I'm showing you on the left, the uh, back of the card, the co card cover for the back. And then here's two sample cards uh, that you can see right here. And you can do the same with uh, also uh, Gates of Richmond. So I just went ahead and I just pulled two sample cards for Gates of Richmond. So this is a very rich design, uh, you know, a lot of uh, variability in the game. I went ahead and added the player aid. I wanted to add the player aid cards just to try to give you a little more flavor for the game. What I think I need to do also, I don't have it here, is I'll work to get the back box uh, cover uh, added. I actually did it for another game, which worked really well, which I'll talk about here in a moment. So I think there's a lot of value. I, I, I'm going to try to get also the back of the box of our games posted because there's a lot of information on just that one area. It's almost like a, it's almost like a flyer. <laughs> it's like a flyer cheat sheet for every game, really the back of the box. So uh, I'm going to focus on getting back. now that I'm getting more of the artwork taken care of, I uh, will also get back of the box. So again, uh, late unpleasantness, it's two games in one. Uh, this is going to be shipping on Monday gates of Richmond. And if it takes all summer, so um, again, I hope it's a game you'll be picking up. I hope it's a game you're gonna enjoy. And we're, again, we're very happy and pleased that we could uh, do this in, in, in memory of uh, Steve Rui on the back cover of the rolls. You'll see we have a dedication that was made by one of his close friends on, on behalf of Steve uh, that we did. So nice little touch, uh, it's something we needed to do. So again, please check out uh, there's still time to pre-order the late unpleasantness again it's two games in one and uh, we hope you'll look at it for those that are looking for something on the uh, euro front euro gaming again colonialism has a quite a, a good reputation on the euro game market it's something that Oli Blenemann out of Germany who's very involved with uh, euro games uh, he's he's very well known for his his company Spielworks he's also working with Compass so he, he helped us to uh, get the expanded second edition of Colonialism where we added some additional, uh, added some additional cards to the game. Uh, it's sort of a dark history, so this, uh, this doesn't pull any punches in terms of how it presents the history and what's happening in terms of what is being recreated here. Uh, so again, check out Colonialism. It's about the imperialistic uh, expansion that took place in the 19th and 20th century. We give a good overall preview of the game. There's a video about a two-hour playthrough with four players that's posted with a big link here on uh, you can watch on YouTube. So again, if you have an a, a inkling to get into some Euro games, uh, we definitely think this is something you might enjoy. So we're very happy to be releasing uh, Colonialism as our first Euro game. So things are very busy. So between uh, what we've just done this week to, uh, today and what's going to be happening on Monday, we have three new game releases. Uh, again, Paper Wars is now out late unpleasantness and colonialism. 
Uh, next, we have uh, some upcoming releases. Uh, so we do have one more release for February, and that is uh, Stalin's War. So again, for Stalin's War, I also did an update on the graphics for uh, Stalin's World War III. So we added the update on the game maps. So it's, four, it's actually four map sheets total. So I'm just showing two of the maps right now. So, uh, you know, this is a Thai Bomba, sort of an alternate history uh, game. So the artwork's a little different. It's not like your typical traditional artwork you might typically see from us. It's got sort of a different sort of uh, approach that it takes, which we sort of follow with the uh, Thai Bomba and alternate history titles. Sort of has a different slant to it, but you can uh, check out pretty straightforward artwork for the maps and then uh, the counter sheets. This was actually posted some time ago, so uh, again, just uh, you can check that out. And Stalin's World War III, again, this has a lot of scenarios in it, um, and it's a, it's a two-game package, again, sort of similar to uh, uh, the game we just talked about, uh, The Late Unpleasantness. So there's uh, two games packed in here. And this is going to be shipping in about the next two weeks. Uh, we'll be shipping uh, Stalin's World War III by Tai Bamba. So again, a uh, little more artwork on the website about that game. So I hope that's something you might want to might want to check out as well. Now I've done a previous broadcast, which again you can find through a YouTube channel on Zeppelin Raider. So yes, all the artwork's done. Uh, we're still doing rules. Uh, the rules layout work is in progress, actually. So that's uh, taking a little bit longer. So what we actually did is we swapped the date out with Stalin's World War III. We just switched the dates. Stalin, uh, Stalin's War is available a little earlier, and we just moved out Zeppelin Raider to the March 7th date, which was what the Stalin's War date was earlier. So we made a quick change there. Also, we don't have any changes. We still are looking at March for Vietnam and combat. Um, so for combat, just want to talk about combat just for a moment. So I do have an update on that game. And I'm going to pull up some information here. So first thing for combat that I want to share with you is we have some artwork, fresh artwork from Adam Starkweather, who's been uh, working on this game uh, from Ross Mortel. And we also did an interview with Ross Mortel several months back where we uh, talked about uh, a little bit about combat to introduce it. But you can see here some of the counters. Again, man-to-man -man combat, World War II. So I'm just going to sort of go very slow here. Now, none of this artwork has been posted on our website yet. So this is all new for the first time uh, that you're seeing this artwork. So here's another counter sheet. So just for a moment, just to give you a flavor for it, I'm not gonna go through the values of what the uh, various values are. This is fresh artwork, I just got it today. So that's something we can definitely cover in the future with uh, the designer, Ross Martell, as we're getting closer. We've got some informational markers as well. So here's some more counter sheets that get into some very specific markers. And notice, you know, it has some very specific actions going on here, like run and gun, plan, grenade, uh, duck back, super fire. So there's, <laughs> there's very specific actions, as you can see, charge, etc., medical aid, rifle grenade. So there's some very unique things going on with the combat game here by the markers. So again, just want to give you a very uh, early on first sneak peek at these game markers. So I hope that's going to be something that might whet your appetite. So a lot of different maps and scenarios are going to be coming with combat. So this is going to be very rich uh, gameplay narrative. Uh, it's going to be when it's, uh, it's really going to tell a great narrative as far as playing the game. So I think that's going to be what its greatest value is going to be, just the excitement of playing the game and what happens and how things change uh, during play. So again, uh, I will get this artwork posted on our combat pre-order page. And I want to thank uh, Adam Starkweather for uh, actually getting this artwork for me uh, over to me earlier today, just in time for tonight's broadcast. So we will do, uh, we will do a more in-depth review of combat. We'll do a designer interview with Ross Martell about combat as we get more of the graphics uh, finished for the game. But this is our first early look at the graphics. I hope, Hoping you're liking the, gra the counter graphics we have. Obviously, man to man is what we have going on here. So we, we, I do hope you, do you like uh, what you see there with those graphics. So that's just a quick, uh, quick sneak peek for combat. And you'll find the game right here. So here's the cover art. And as I mentioned, I just got the artwork now. So I'll be adding that artwork to this product page. So combat's available for a pre-order now. And it takes you through the system. Uh, the various mini scenarios. There's four full-size game maps here, guys. There's four 
uh, you know, there's four full game counter sheets, which I've begun showing you already. Uh, so there's going to be a deck of cards, uh, scenario booklets, so a lot of scenarios, obviously, based on different maps and different conditions. So again, I think this is going to be something uh, that we're really looking forward uh, to getting out. I think this is going to sort of go along the, you know, people think of this or reckon this to ambush by Victory Games. So the kind of storytelling you got out of ambush, I think you're going to sort of experience that now with a brand new system combat is what's going to happen. So a little bit on that. I want to also give you a quick uh, map preview for uh, the next uh, company scale system, uh, the little land. So right now, again, I just have the map. The map is what's available right now. But I do want to say that we uh, also have, I'm just going to find it now. We also do have uh, the game map for it. So let me See if I can find that map here. Oh gosh, it's not gonna be as easy to find as I thought. So let's see, let me go over here to find the map. So I have the, actually it's the counters that I have. So I misspoke. So if you can look here for a moment, I actually showed the map earlier on Facebook. So I'm gonna go ahead and just sort of minimize my screen here just for a moment so I can focus on this counter sheet. So let me go ahead and do that now. So here is a sample uh, counter sheet. So first time again for this. So I will definitely make sure we post this. This is our next, this is our first Eastern Front company scale system game uh, that we'll be releasing in several months. So I want to give you a flavor of one of the very first counter sheets. So we're early on in the artwork phase for the Little Land. And uh, again, uh, this is gonna be another big hit. We've, we've you know, done very well with Montelamar was on the Western Front, the first Western Front, the Liberation Series was released several months ago. Uh, and again, we're now working on Eastern Front. So as you can see from these counters, they might look pretty familiar to you, to what you're accustomed to for the company scale system. So again, that's something we're looking forward to getting out. And again, as we get closer to the release of this game, I'll be sure, be sure to bring in the designer so we can have more in-depth discussions uh, for that game as well. So let me next go back. So let's go back again to the schedule. So I do wanna get into uh, quickly a few more updates. Uh, the next update I wanna provide is for Blue Water Navy. So this was a pretty in-depth update I've actually made. I made a comprehensive update to the product page for Blue Water Navy before, I don't think we had a, we just had a map, I think, which was a very old map. So really had nothing on this product page. So I wanna draw your attention to Blue Water Navy, which will be coming out soon. So now we've got a lot of graphics now available for the game. So just here's the first look at the game cover to give you an idea. And again, this is something you'll find on our pre-order page, as I mentioned. I think the back of the box is very helpful. And I wanna do this for all games moving forward. It's something I'm gonna to move towards. So here you can see uh, the elevator pitch, what this topic's about. Blue Water Navy covers the water at sea, air, close ashore, and low earth orbits for the Kola Peninsula in northern Russia to the Mediterranean Sea and, and west over the Atlantic Ocean to the United States and Cuba. So very expansive play area. Uh, it's a brand new design uh, as well. So again, something we're very much uh, looking forward to releasing. You can see there's game cards in it. I'll actually be adding some separate game cards to the product page shortly. I don't have them posted yet, but you can see from here, you can see some counters. You can definitely see some uh, game cards. It's by Stuart Tong as the designer and Bruce, Bruce Erian again is the artist who's done some work that I've shown you already earlier uh, today as well. And I'll just show you some of the graphics. So the map has definitely been updated for this game, much different than the earlier map, which was the only graphic we showed on the product page. You can get a better idea now. Uh, this is basically like a near final or final map of what it's actually going to look like for Blue Water Navy. So again, looks like I'm getting some thumbs up on that, which is great to see. And of course I added a bunch of counter sheets. So typically what I do is I just really focus on counter sheet fronts. So thanks again to Bruce Yerian for doing great work on doing all these uh, silhouettes uh, for all these uh, different naval aircraft, uh, warships, uh, submarines, uh, missiles, etc. He's done a really fantastic job with all the various graphics uh, and informational markers for the game. So again, there's four counter sheets. I've just got the fronts of the counter sheets here that I'll give you a quick tour of right now. So I'm just expanding these up so you can see 
Uh, here we've got obviously some of the US forces, but now we're also getting into, you can see, we actually got the flags for the NATO allies. So you got in the top left corner of the counters, they're not all US, USA flags. You can also see their NATO allies as well on the left side of the counter sheet. And then we start getting into some of the game markers already. Then I'll go to uh, the Warsaw Pact here. We'll go into <laughs> the more ominous side. <laughs> Warsaw Pact forces here, we can see uh, we've got a whole set of markers. Yes, nuclear nuclear strikes, yes, they're included. We've got some markers for Iceland as an option, Arab-Israel conflicts. We've got a lot of different activities, military options, political actions, and gambits that can take place. You see Libya, you see Cuba, Israel, things in Iceland, Arab-Israeli. We've got, we've got the whole bolo acts here pretty much covered, so very thematic. Very thematic future war, ser serious though, serious future war design, taking a serious look at a strategic operational level, multiple theaters, multiple uh, fronts. So again, these are just the fronts of the four counter sheets. I haven't shown you the backs of the counter sheets yet, but again, all new artwork for Blue Water Navy. Definitely want to draw your attention to that. There is more. There's also gonna be game cards in Blue Water Navy. So here's the NATO deck. I'm just gonna step you through the NATO deck to give you a flavor of the game cards in Blue Water Navy. Again, I'm gonna take maybe two of these sample cards for each side, like he did for the Late Unpleasantness, the Civil War game from Steve Rui, and I'll post some of them. But here are the actual, here's the card face for each of the game cards so you can get a flavor of what's on these game cards. So a lot of operational events, or it could be a reaction event. So a lot of strategic operational decisions, you're gonna to have to make a lot of choices in the game with the cards, you know, the ops points, et cetera. You know, you can see the various card values of how they can be used. So again, I think very interesting to see here, this is the NATO deck uh, for the game. So again, I know you probably wanna go through the whole deck, but uh, I guess this is a real tease, huh guys? I'm sort of teasing you here because the cards are really interesting. Uh, that I'm going through here. And I haven't read through all the cards myself, but I'm like, I'm looking at these cards now, I go, oh, these are really neat. They got some really interesting events going on here. So, okay, that's the NATO deck. I didn't even get halfway through it. Let's go to the Soviet deck next. Soviet, uh, I love the cover, by the way, of the Soviet uh, deck. I think it looks great. Let me just pull up. I think somebody's just chatting as a question here. And I'll take that question in a second. So thanks for the chat. We'll get to all your questions. Also, on Facebook Live, I'll look for any questions or comments. So let's, I love the back of the Soviet deck cards. I don't know why. So let's, uh, here's another tease again. Uh, sorry, there's op, there's op points here involved, guys. I don't know exactly the meaning of the points here. So this is to give you, again, it's meant to give you a flavor of the game. This is not a tutorial or official preview of the game. That's going to involve getting the game designer, Stuart Tong, involved. But again, you know, a good <laughs> KGB assassinations, of, of course right? Port mining, but there's, again, there's reaction events that can also happen. So uh, very interesting how these cards can be used. So operation, or in this case, there's no reaction event, as you can see here. But uh, yeah, lots of interesting stuff going on here. So I hope this really uh, piques your interest. The game cards look great. There's a lot of game cards. If I go down to the bottom here, uh, we've got over 50 game cards. I think it's 55 per side, actually. So it gives you an idea of what is happening here. So I did want to spend a little time on Blue Water Navy as I've just done, because I think this, uh, this is really coming up. It's going to be coming up for release. Uh, actually, this was slated for release, to be honest with you. This game was slated for release in March. And we, uh, we're getting ready to send the card files for printing, which we do for cards. We do the, the cards overseas. And we did get notified by our printing vendor that they actually uh, had to delay the print run for several of our games uh, that involve cards. And I'm, I'm afraid to tell you, you just saw what? What did you just see from me? Right, you just saw game cards. <laughs> so so uh, we have about a three to four week delay before the game cards are being gonna be printed up. Everything else is basically done though. So we have to wait for the game card. So we had this on our schedule as of this morning for a March release. And obviously now it's pushed out. We're probably going to call it more like early May for Blue Water Navy, uh, just because we need those cards. Uh, and they're, the vendor uh, the vendor's going to take longer for these cards. But in the meantime, I hope you like what you, what you see tonight. 
and uh, there's obviously a lot more graphics to check out about the game. I'm going to see if I can get Stuart on for an interview. That's actually one I want to try to get going first because there's really a lot of information now uh, in a graphic format with the components that we can now go through. And I think this is now ready for a designer interview. If you guys are okay with that, uh, I'd like to do that. So, so happy to do that. So, and I will get to your question, Rich, here in a second, absolutely. So please bear with me and we'll definitely come back to your question. So again, that was a more in-depth coverage uh, about that game. So I wanna mention a few things now, as I do like to talk about um, future game projects. So when, one good feedback you all gave me was, I don't wanna just see what's coming in the next 30 to 60 days. I'd like a broader window because you know all our pre-orders, we try to get them out within say six to nine months if we can. We definitely shoot for less than a year. I think in most cases, unless it's a monster game, there are games that are taking longer than we anticipated, and but we did expect it. So third World War game series is monster game. Six maps, up team counter sheets. Um, we actually changed artists for that project. So we're taking longer for a monster, a very big project like the third World War game series. That's, you know, that's, that's pushed out. And there's one or two others, but we do, Otherwise, you know, 85, 90% of the time, pretty much all our pre-orders, in other words, they're gonna be out within a year from when we announce it. But you've also told me you would like information about maybe some project pipeline activity that's outside of a year. So I do wanna give you uh, some, uh, I, wanna, I wanna make two announcements for tonight. And these are uh, two announcements about future game releases. So I probably should have given myself a pause there for the uh, chapter divide for the video recording. But right now we're gonna talk about two new um, projects that we've committed to for designers. And uh, it's great hearing from designers as well. So I wanna share with you uh, the first uh, design commitment we have is a more perfect union. So a more perfect union is by John Lapham. And this is, uh, Definitely sort of a card driven game um, Again, I've I've been I've studied this game myself. I've looked at you know, he's got a dedicated Yahoo group for this game for some time With all the game materials. It's he's got a board game geek page But you can find the board game uh, geek page right here a more perfect union. It's the struggle to ratify the Constitution So I love this topic. So this one grabbed me right away when I heard about it because it's very interesting from a quasi-educational slash uh, historical, truly historical perspective around the formation of our getting the Constitution ratified for the United States. So this is exactly what that game does. And I'm really, uh, really looking forward uh, as we actually launch the project. We haven't even got to the pre-order page yet. You know, that's John is gonna be spending several months refining his design on a more perfect union, but we're definitely, I'm definitely looking forward to an interview with John on, on his design. It's a very interesting work. Uh, I've got a Word document here that actually shows uh, some of the game card play that's in the game as well. So you can see right here, you know, these convention cards that can be played. Uh, again, these are, these are mock-ups, guys. These are not, this is obviously not final artwork. Uh, this is his own playtest materials, but again, it was something I was able to look at uh, for my own sake, just to review his work. And again, love love what I see here, as far as what he's done. So a lot of you know, we've got the personalities, uh, you've got the different conventions, etc., and the effects that can happen. So a very educational bent on uh, the framing of our constitution. So again, really looking forward to uh, really looking forward to getting into this. Uh, project you know this is going to be a great i think this is going to be a great project for us actually really looking forward to it uh, what i'd also like to show you is i've got a play test map so again think of this as a euro you know think of this being on a mounted map this is definitely screams with game cards uh, probably some uh, you know there might be some wooden discs you know like the euro game feel or or, or cubes uh, markers, etc., to track things. You know, this is going to have more of uh, it's going to have more of that kind of a feel to it, almost like those coin series games that have the mounted maps and you've got the, some of the components. If you know, if you catch my drift, sort of that crossover into Euro quality components. So this is a play. This is purely a playtest map of a more perfect union, 
And again, you can just, just to give you an idea of, you know, this design's been worked on for several years by John Lapham, and he's gonna spend several more months just to wrap it up. He's just tightening, tightening a few things before we're gonna get together, and then we'll probably do some vassal play testing as well. So I'm really excited about this project. This is definitely further out than, uh, you know, this is not coming in the next nine months, for example. It's further out than that, but I hope this is something uh, from a historical perspective. It's definitely a different topic. I think you would all agree uh, this is going to be something interesting from us. So again, look for a more perfect union from John Lapham. We'll be announcing that. You know, I think the announcement won't come until near the end of this year, to be realistic because we're not rushing this, we wanna give John time with his design work. But we have signed intent to publish uh, his game. So very happy to share that with you. Uh, also have one more announcement, and that is uh, Javier Romero. Uh, Javier Romero, uh, who's a designer uh, overseas, he did, uh, he's done many designs. So if I actually would go and uh, look at his design credits, if I would click here and just open this on a new link, to learn more about uh, Javier. Uh, you can see here uh, his different uh, designs here. So let me uh, pull those up. You can see some are right here, page one. So we've got several of his designs right here. So he's done quite a bit of work. And the one we're gonna be focusing on, it's not a reprint at all, uh, but it comes from something he originally did back in 2006. It's, uh, it is, it is called Kursk 1943, but it's also the South and the North combined. So he actually posted uh, on the Constant World forum. If I, if I go here, you can see he talks about his Kursk scheme here on the Constant World forum, and he has a link to the rules. But basically, this, is a, this appeared originally on Alia Magazine, uh, issue 31. Back, it was actually 2006, according to Board Game Geek, I believe. And uh, he's expanded it, so there's two maps, and the maps can be played separately. It's gonna be a north map and a south map for the Battle of Kursk. You can do them separate as separate games or scenarios, or you can combine them together to do the full, to do the full exercise. And he provides some information here about his game. We've just received in the last two weeks uh, all the components, all the rules, everything where we can start working on this game, so it's a matter of getting it on the schedule. But again, we're very excited about a, this is a, a, a complete redesign of his Curse game. So this is different than the Alia game. It's different from the game that's on Board Game Geek. It's not the same game. It has been changed. Uh, so it's something that's gonna be new. Uh, it's just, it has some roots in something he did. So I thought this is a nice transition going from a more perfect union to Kursk. <laughs> Let's get right to the Eastern Front, World War II, because we, we were sort of getting into that historical uh, Euro uh, type thing. I'm, I'm just joking. I'm just pulling your leg. So we love all types of games, as you can see. Absolutely. So these are two new, uh, these are two new designs we have agreements on. Uh, in the case of this Kursk game, it's a new redesign. Actually, all the, com all the materials have been turned in by the designer officially, so it's ready to go as far as getting it scheduled uh, for us to take it over uh, from a project standpoint and work on this with uh, Javier. And then, uh, but a more perfect union, that one's a further out because uh, John is gonna, Lapham's gonna be doing more work on his own on that with the people that he has uh, for the next uh, half of the year. So I hope that gives you a good overview of uh, some new announcements we have. I hope those are two new items of interest. We'll definitely announce those uh, as soon as we can. And it's nice to see more folks on Facebook, a lot of folks. So great to see on Facebook Live. Yeah, tax refund money is being well spent already, right? Thank you, Michael, for that comment on Facebook Live. And uh, there's a question from Rich De Fortuna. He asks, uh, sorry for the delayed response. He's been driving since I began and he's parked now. And anyway, he, want, he wants to let you know that he did receive his copy of Paper Wars Issue 91 a few days ago in Philadelphia. So it's great to hear. That's what I thought. Somebody posted on the Consum World forum. I thought they said they had just received the magazines and they were complimenting the articles. So for, I guess we're just using today as the official date. Maybe we ended up shipping them all as of today. And there's our official release date that they're pretty much all out the door, but some have received them already. Uh, somebody also made the comment that I believe there's a two pages of charts and tables. Uh, for the Jihad game, uh, for the game that's included in Paper Wars. So um, 
so what we're going to do there is I'm going to make available as a separate PDF uh, download just those two pages so you can print them out separately. As I think right now, they sort of have to be pulled out of the Paper Wars magazine. They're not separate cards. So I'll make separate PDFs available if you know what I'm talking about. If you have Paper Wars 91, thanks for uh, purchasing, Rich. Everybody else, thanks for purchasing uh, Paper Wars 91 as well. Uh, Curtis Milborn's asking, is Barlev still on the schedule? Barlev is very far along, actually, to be honest with you. Um, I just proofed, we've been proofing, I think we completed our ninth round of counter sheet proofing today. <laughs> so the counters are going to the printers next week. There's eight counter sheets for Barlev, guys. So yeah, no joking. So in all seriousness, like, okay, so serious question, I'm gonna give you a serious answer to Barlev, okay? So I'm not gonna mess around. Let me see if I can, uh, actually go to my project site. So I'm gonna show you how I do my project work, if that's okay. So you're, you're not gonna look at the other projects I'm working on, right? You're not gonna see this screen. No screen capture going on right now, okay, with my projects there. I think I went fast enough, so you can't, uh, you can't see it, right? So good, you didn't see it. I went too fast for you, right? So let me go back. Uh, Docs and files, Barlev. Barlev counters. Let's see, I believe this is where I wanna go. So yes, so Newt Grunitz is doing the counters for Barlev. This is our ninth. Uh, we've done nine rounds of, of proofing because it's hard to do proofing of counters. And it's a new, it's sort of like a new design. It's not, it's not just taking Frank Chadwick's game. It's, it's not just that at all. There's a lot more work involved than that. So it is still downloading. So I've shot myself in the foot for this live uh, broadcast. You guys are feeling my pain. So it's eight counter sheets that are still getting proofed. So I'm gonna try to pull it up now. So no kidding guys, this is it. So you're seeing it now. So counter, there's 16 sheets that are getting proofed here. So we're also providing both NATO, your standard NATO symbols for armor, or you can have the, the side silhouettes. Uh, right here. So you can see if I zoom in up a little, you're getting this choice. You don't, you don't use both counters in the game. You use just the one. So if you look over here, I'll use the red stripe. I've got, uh, I've got the 599 of the 421st uh, Brigade. You can either use the, uh, <laughs> the, the silhouette of the armory unit, or you can go with the NATO symbol. You pick your art, whatever your artistic flair is or your preference. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're, Barlev is very far along. It's basically stuff that's going to the printers at this point, in all seriousness. So I'll do a flyby by special request. Who requested? So Curtis, this is for you. So here's the back sheet of counter sheet one. Here's the front sheet of counter sheet two. These are all the Israeli de defense forces, by the way, because there's, don't forget, there's two games or two maps here. Here's the back side of counter sheet two. And yes, we're making sure if we're using icons, Arab versus Israeli, the, the armor are gonna be facing off against each other, they're facing into each other. For the aircraft, the aircraft are also facing into each other. You know, we, we're paying attention to detail here. So here the armor is facing the opposite direction. This is again the uh, Egyptian general reserve units here that, uh, uh, that are facing now the opposite way for the tanks, if you get my drift. Or use the, I, use the NATO symbols if you want. So again, we're doing a lot of proofing. This is a huge job. So Newt Grunitz has done a fantastic job with all this, all this work. So we, take, we took the unit scale down. This is more tactical now. It's a newer design, some new design elements, completely reworked order battle. Frank Chadwick helped us as well with that in the game map enhancements. Here's some of the aircraft, by the way. You can see some of the artwork on the aircraft. Don't pay attention to some, there's some actual gray numbers showing up on this, uh, this preview sheet for proofing. Those are actually used for proofing. So these gray numbers that you might see are actually not gonna be appearing when we print the counter sheet. But here you can see Mirage 3, MiG 21s. So you can get a real flavor of uh, some of the detail. So Newt Grunitz is doing, right guys, a bang up job uh, with these counters. I hope you'll agree uh, what he's doing with the counter sheet. So again, eight full counter sheets of, of proofing. We're wrapping up the proofing now. Lots of stuff, lots of stuff. Here's some out of supply markers. High, uh, high approach altitude, so high above the clouds. You can see the cloud cover. 
but the high symbol is above the clouds. Or if you're low, low approach, low is the, the wording low is below the clouds. Serviceability ratings as well of equipment. Uh, fired status, again, just a lot of details. SAMS fired, self-propelled fired, bridge engineers, bridging engineers, fuel, tons of stuff. So I'll tell you what, Barlev is going to be a kick-ass game, right? So like I'm not, I'm not even prepared to like show you everything for Barlev, but uh, we're doing the player aid cards right now. We've just started to work on those. There's a lot of them. Again, it's two games. You can see the project site right here. Uh, you know, where we're going through everything right now. We're going through the player aid cards. Uh, this is just a mock-up by the designer. These are not the player aid cards by the artist. This is a mock-up of the charts and tables. Those are actually getting uh, done now. Uh, they're getting updated now, but uh, obviously we're going through, we're, we're looking at everything uh, for the game. So really excited about uh, Barlev. Uh, we sh I've shown you the two game maps for the project before, uh, beautiful game maps for Barlev, Golan, and Suez, full-size maps, 9 16th inch counters. As you can see, I'm getting so excited about the game. I'm, I'm probably killing you guys because I've, I've covered so much about it. So let me go back to some questions. Uh, see so how we covered the tax refund. I've covered Barlev to ad nauseum. I probably lost some of you guys over that one, so sorry about that. Austin, thanks for the kind words about, uh, uh, you missed what I said about World War III. Uh, yeah, World War III, uh, that's uh, Thai Bomba's release. The update on that is it's coming actually end of this month. It was going to come on March 7th, uh, Austin. So Stalin's World War III has moved up in the schedule now. It's coming uh, now end of February. So I basically talked, and also um, I posted uh, to, some of the map samples are now posted on the web page for the game. So that's, that, that's really what I uh, wanted to let you know about that. Glad you received Pacific Tide as well. I'll look for other questions on Facebook as well, if you have any. Looks like on the, the, the webcast right now, looks like there's no other. Uh, hit Q&A or chat if you have any questions for me, and then I'll wrap up as far as what I have to wrap up. So again, I hope you didn't see too much of my project site. I think I'll edit out. <laughs> I'll edit out my landing page because it's like 20, 25 projects, which some I haven't announced yet. So I probably have to edit that out of the... Uh, well, I can't edit it out of Facebook Live, so I guess I can't. So, oh, well, you guys are a very exclusive group. You get to see a lot of stuff, don't you? So let's see. So I have a few things I want to talk about really quickly. And that is, again, uh, we have Compass Games Expo coming up. So if you just go to our normal web page, the way it looks like this, you'll see our banner. We've got Expo 2019. And uh, it takes you right to our pre-order page. That's the way we start the process. I do want to mention that the, uh, we're giving away free t-shirts if you can go ahead and register by February 15th, which is what, next week, or near the end of next week. So just wanted to call your attention to that. Also, um, this is not really the expo information page. This is just to get your order started so you can go ahead and get registered for the event. Uh, but once you do this process, I'll send you the link to get registered. We've had uh, actually over, I think around uh, eight or 10 people have already registered and I'm gonna update the site. But you'll see there's a link here, or you see this link for Compass Games Expo 2019. That actually takes you to the official web page uh, for what's coming up. So it's slated for November 8th through the 11th. It's again Veterans Day weekend. We doubled the gaming area. We doubled our gaming hall space, so it's in two large areas uh, this coming year, 2019. You can see the dates there. We'll start setting up Thursday night, which is actually November 7th, not the 8th. But please check it out. So you'll go to the pre-order page. It's a really nice facility. Obviously, we had our first event last year. It was my first chance to be there uh, and uh, to help organize this event. And really, we had like 120, 125 people. It was great. So that's why we really expanded the venue, because everybody gave us the thumbs up that it was a great time. And uh, you can play any game from any publisher, obviously. It's not just Compass Games being played. You're welcome to play any sort of game you'd like to play. Absolutely. Not a problem. We've got special events we're doing. There's flea market tables. And as everybody knows very well by now, we do an extraordinary job on a special sales price on basically the entire Compass inventory that we bring in. So it's a really fun trip to make you out on the East Coast. Of course, of course I've got my Consum World Expo 
uh, June 22nd through the 29th in uh, Tempe, Arizona. The 19th year. I don't know if I had any gray hair in my in my first year. It's going to be 19 years now for Condensing World Expo. So again, if you can, please check out. If you can get pre-registered, you can do even the pre-order. The, the, you can do the uh, pre-order now and pay later option just to get your name in there. And that will also help lock you down for the free uh, Expo shirt that we can give you when you show up. Uh, for the event in November. So I hope, I hope definitely hope you'll consider it. Uh, yes, update on Euro shipping was asked by Juan. Juan, I don't have uh, good news to share with you on Euro shipping. The, uh, the company we were, we were working with and planning to work with, long story, short, there, long story short, there was an acquisition of that company by a, another company. And uh, that just put our plans, you know, when a company gets acquired, things happen. So our best laid intentions and a lot of the legwork that went into that just, just, just did not come together. So I do know we're looking at uh, out of England, out of the UK, we're looking at a second, I think, it's, I think it's second chance. I hope I got that name right. But there's a big uh, distributor uh, in UK. The challenge there is I'm not sure how it works with, uh, uh, you know, Bill Thomas is looking into that. He really knows from the business side what's going on. To be honest, I don't know. What happens with, uh, you know, if Brexit's going on? I don't know the political economic ramifications of that, but that's something that, that's something that I think it's, I think it's called Second Chance Games. I hope I got that right. But if it's between them and Bill Thomas, you know, I'll remain hopeful that they find a good solution. But we do, we are on a plan B for Euro-friendly shipping. You know, we, we want to come up with something that's going to help not only you, the customer, but, you know, obviously it would be great for us. Obviously, we're very motivated we're very motivated to do what we can because it, it's unbelievably, it helps us unbelievably to get pre-orders, more pre-orders, you know, because that's just a better profit uh, for us, profit margin to sell direct or do pre-orders direct. So, uh, yeah, that's the latest on that. So, excellent question, Juan. So, great questions from the Facebook crowd. I'm opening it up to anybody on Facebook or the Zoom platform. If you have any other questions, please fire away. So we just talked about Expo, so please check out the Expo page. You'll, you can't miss the link right there. That will take you to that page. I also want to mention that uh, a lot of projects going on, guys, lots of projects. And I don't want anybody that's even joining here that's involved in projects with me to think that your project is on the back burner. As I mentioned, somebody asked about Bar Love. You know, I wasn't planning to talk about it today, but, yeah, there's a lot of work being done on that. But, yeah, for other projects, just given the project pipeline, and the ebb and flow of where I have to put my attention personally. Obviously, I have to put my attention on certain um, on certain games over others. So I did uh, I did want to mention that. Uh, one thing as just a quick uh, FYI, if you go to the Consum World uh, News Desk again, this is what I run independently as Consum World News. I hope you're all familiar with it. But if you ever want the latest news from Compass Games, because we don't really run a, a blog site with our um, e-commerce, with our website, if you really want to know just sort of the latest coverage about Compass, uh, please check out in the right-hand column of Consum World News. This is probably the best source under Categories. If you go under Categories under Publishers, you'll find Compass Games. We have 313 news postings covered through Consum World. If you click on that, it's a great sort of, uh, uh, it's a great like cheat shortcut to see you know what's happening with uh, what's happening uh, in terms of social media, any news, pre-orders, new releases, etc. So here, for example, uh, Forgotten Legions play analysis lamps are going out, replays, uh, Compass Games Live. My last episode three weeks ago, twenty two is there. Night Fighter A. So again, if you look here, and I can look at older entries, it's ten entries per page. So. This is a really great way just to see what's happening with Compass, or you can do a web search, uh, not only on our own website, but on, uh, on the Constant World News Desk. You can do that. And as I mentioned, uh, and I want to mention this again, I mentioned last episode, our product page search is so much better now. It's something we've really improved. So let's say you're looking for a game. If I was looking for Blue Water Navy, if I would type the word Navy, I'd probably get about 60 results, literally. 60 results that would not help me find blue water navy notice if i start typing blue i see blue water navy after typing a few letters okay give, i'll try another one vietnam oh i typed three letters vietnam came up first 
Uh, also, by the way, Hearts and Minds, I didn't mention Hearts and Minds. You can see it right here. Hearts and Minds, I've just added to our calendar. That's going to be shipping in April. A lot of people have been asking me about Hearts and Minds, the new Mounted Map Edition, where we also added some solitaire rules. That one's coming in April sometime, so we're really excited about that. Crusade and Revolution, also similar. Crusade and Revolution, we're looking at the second quarter of this year, for John Branson was asking. So, uh, and thanks John Branson for confirming it's Second Chance Games. So I do hope, you know, we do find a way to work that out with Second Chance Games on the Euro shipping front. That would be awesome if we can do that. But yeah, Crusade and Revolution, I believe that's also like on a Q2 time frame, and I'll get that confirmed. But Hearts and Minds, we've got that, uh, is moving up on our schedule, and we're looking good on that for April. But again, you name any game you want to find, uh, you're going to find the game now. It's much easier to do a search. Uh, you know, I'm working right now in the Korean War for uh, Joe Bukowski, working on the maps right now for Korean War. So I can find that. I can find that page very easily as well as uh, Fire and Ice and Vietnam Rumor War. So again, very easy to navigate our site as far as finding our products. So I'm really happy that we're able to do that. Let me just switch for a moment. I'm going to stop uh, sharing just for a moment, just to talk to you guys for a little bit. So again, just fire away with your questions if you have any. Uh, last things I want to mention is we are looking for artists, and uh, I'm getting some great design submittals in from either current designers or first-time designers. So we are putting out a call for additional artists, artists that have experience, uh, you know, hopefully using things like Illustrator, uh, Photoshop, uh, definitely would be a, what we're looking for for artists uh, if you've had a game project or two already you know or if again I'm talking to you as if you know somebody so if you know somebody uh, if you know somebody guys that's an artist that we haven't maybe used yet uh, that you think is probably using the same type of graphic tools which are pretty standard these days with Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop etc let me know you know we're looking for uh, additional resources we haven't had any drop off of our artists. It's just we need more of them. Uh, we've got stuff that's in the backlog, and I can only assign, or we can only assign so much uh, to what artists we have. So uh, again, if you know anybody, you know, please do an introductory email. Include me at john at compassgames.com, and uh, I'll be happy to go from there. Uh, same for designs. I think that's for a more a more perfect union, if I'm not mistaken. That's where that design came from. I've got two or three other designs uh, we're working on right now that have come through. Another one came through today as well. So uh, again, really exciting. Just you know, if we can get uh, hear from people about new designs, etc. So we're very eager to uh, work and expand our project pipeline, for sure. Uh, also, want to mention at uh, I'm not going to share the page, but if you go, uh, most of you probably are familiar with Consum World. And on the Constant World Forum, and as well as the news desk, we just uh, sent out, uh, we had a really nice response for our annual fundraiser drive for Constant World. So overall, we had about 550, 600 uh, contributors this year at a silver or gold level. A civil level contributor is a $10 donation. Gold level is 25. And I wanna, I wanna thank Compass Games. Uh, they've done um, a very nice, generous offer. So those that contribute to Constant World and donate, uh, you'll get a, uh, a special offer from Compass Games. You'll, you'll get a coupon code for 50% off Absolute Victory. So that game, that doesn't come at a small price. It's one of the bigger games from Compass. And it's being offered at 50% off for any donation you can make to Consum World, which is, which is me. <laughs> so I would love, so yeah, it helps. It, obviously, it helps keep the lights on. So uh, Consum World is just my own independent operation, but Compass was kind enough to throw in a huge discount for Absolute Victory. We also have uh, 26 last count participating publishers that are doing uh, publisher direct discounts. And I just sent out the email earlier, uh, this week uh, of some of those specials, about 21 or uh, 22 publisher specials went out already. I'm collecting some more information. Uh, there's some additional coupon codes I'm waiting on from uh, Operational Studies Group, uh, from uh, Canvas Temple Publishing, um, and uh, one or two others uh, that are also contributing. Just didn't have the information. Uh, I think Holland Spiel might be another one. So again, just wanna mention, 
every publisher pretty much that's a publisher in our hobby is doing uh, special discounts along the lines of uh, the very uh, generous offer by Compass Games. And the goal of the, the uh, publisher, uh, these publisher rewards is that you will hopefully get your money back. So whatever you can contribute to Consum World that uh, comes to me will be money you will re you will recoup through savings of purchases. And we're trying to make it a win-win for the publishers to sell stuff direct, for you to get stuff, uh, for you to help keep the lights on for Consum World. So again, uh, one, again, the main focus here of this spotlight is again, uh, a great offer from Compass Games, 50% off from Absolute Victory. I'll be very happy to give you that coupon code if you just, uh, it only takes a donation of $10 actually to get that big a discount. Uh, and then if you donate $25 or more, a lot of the publishers increase their uh, reward level at the $25 level. So again, lots of great stuff happening, but again, uh, things are very busy at Compass Games, as you can see, our schedule that we covered today, we not only released Paper Wars uh, uh, this week, we've got two releases on Monday. We've got uh, Stalin's World War III releasing later this month. We've got at least two releases for March. Uh, we've got Hearts and Minds coming in April. We mentioned the two new, brand new designs that we, we uh, have every intent to publish in the future. It won't be this year, obviously. These are further out to give you sort of a, a sneak peek into the, the midterm, two to three years out for Compass Games, where a more perfect union and the, uh, the Kursk uh, game, a new redesign by Javier. So, uh, Javier, rather. So, really excited about all that. Uh, talked about Compass Game Expo. We have until February 15th if you want to earn the free t shirt. A call for artists and designs. Uh, and again, if there's any other questions, I'll be happy to take it. What's the latest update in South China Sea Volume 2? John Gorkowski is making good progress on that design, actually. John Branson, but I do not have a specific date uh, because that's still being worked on. So I'm still waiting, waiting for more details on that from the designer. So that is the next release, South China Sea. And when we can get uh, uh, more of an update, uh, I don't know if you know, but John Gorkowski, he's serving. He's actually serving uh, for us in the military. Uh, he's, uh, so he's called to duty. And of course, if, if you can imagine, that's beyond a full-time job when, when you're called out on uh, active duty. So he's doing some work for us uh, in support of the country. So, uh, but he is getting work done, definitely. And I will try to get you a better update on South China Sea Volume 2. Absolutely happy to do that. So with that, if there's no further questions, um, I'm sure I've forgotten every something, but again, really excited about the new releases coming out uh, in the next few days. And uh, have any questions for me, post them on Facebook, uh, on discuss discussion forum for Consum World Forum. Um, again, we've got a lot of games in the pipeline for this year, as I'm sure you can imagine. Some great questions tonight. Thanks for that. Enjoy talking about Barlev. That was a great question on Barlev. Been spending a lot of time on Barlev the past two to three weeks proofing. So it's a huge project. So uh, I want to thank you all again for uh, joining tonight and look forward to talking to you again in the next two to three weeks. Thanks, everybody, and have a wonderful weekend. Bye bye.